Zero and lift off. in there somewhere, half of it on a bus, half of it on a plane, but there it is, so now the journey really begins. As we led up to that whole operation, we had a, a, a huge set of work ahead of us. Uh, stowing the rover and getting it ready for shipment um, meant a lot of shifts in a row, uh, a lot of uh, complex operations with the vehicle. And, and you have to remind yourself, every time you pick that rover up, it's almost a billion dollars worth of hardware uh, that, that you're watching out for every time you do something with it. So um, that, that part got to be really white knuckles for us. It makes us a little nervous sometimes. I mean, you worry about the environment. It's it's on a, a forklift. It gets put on the on the back of a, a flatbed truck and then run down the, the highway to March Air Force Base from JPL, and that whole transport um, is is just like you're you're driving any other uh, any other truck down the highway. So it's, it's full of, of bumps and and it takes lumps and and so it's it's one of those that that you worry about for sure. It's a very impressive operation to get the shipping containers up into the aircraft. Uh, these boxes are incredibly large, and uh, and even as big as uh, as big an aircraft as the C-17 is, uh, it is barely big enough to fit these boxes. team of Air Force uh, reservists to help us load it, uh, led by the loadmaster who uh, was in charge of the winching operation. Um, basically they use the aircraft cable system and hydraulic winch to uh, hook up to the container and tow it on board. As that happens, uh, you have a team of uh, about eight other Air Force crew members plus all of the payload crew members, all of the MSL crew members that we had with us watching all of the corners, making sure that, that everything was clearing and that the measurements were right and that, that we weren't going to run into a problem as the, if the shipping container got offline for any reason. Even despite the best planning, uh, we can find ourselves in, in a spot where we still have to solve some of the problems. We need thick plywood to reduce the contact pressure on the, the wheels on the shipping container. You have this, this thing which weighs you know, 10,000 pounds or more and you have to be, make sure you don't punch a hole in the aircraft floor. So we had to get thicker plywood. We had to make emergency calls out here to Kennedy Space Center to make sure that enough plywood was on hand when we landed so that we would actually have that same accommodation on the way off of the aircraft. All of those operations had to be undone once we uh, got down to the ground here at KSC, and so the, the operations uh, on the tarmac, including the offloading of the shipping containers, uh, had to be done uh, just in the same way. The same crew uh, then, uh, after the five-hour flight, um, stepped up and, and uh, had to check all of those clearances again, uh, make sure all of the rigging was, was out of the way, and that the winch system was ready to help uh, lower the, the shipping containers down the ramp. Uh, you didn't want it to get the, the shipping container to get away from you and, and roll out onto the tarmac. And, you know, get get out of control. So, um, but they did a, a really nice, careful job. And again, we had uh, all of the same crew that were there uh, at March Air Force Base here at KSC, plus our arrival crew. We had a fresh crew of folks uh, who are well rested to be able to take care of a lot of the ground operations once we arrived here. So that those of us who had been going for almost 48 hours straight um, 
didn't have to also uh, finish out the, that part of the job. We're about to send uh, our baby on a, a very long journey to go uh, spend its life uh, exploring the surface of Mars. That's, that's uh, it's a big leap of faith to be able to hand off the vehicle. Uh, they have a great team uh, on the launch vehicle side and they're, they're ready to take care of her. But we are, <laughs> we are definitely nervous parents.